and that is confidence in his presence. Confidence in his presence. We are living in a world that is full of very many troubles, very many, um, you could put whatever you want to put there. You wake up every day, you are discouraged. In fact, there was a time that I was on leave, and you wake up and you are tired, just imagine. You are on leave, but you wake up and you are tired. That is how life it is to us. But somebody expects you to step forward after you leave and say, you are refreshed. Here is the blueprint to preach. But the man of God is tired. We want to actually have the confidence in the presence of God. Um, confidence is the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. Confidence, second slide. Confidence is the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. When you're going to sit for exam, many of us pray that God would walk with us and be able to walk and do something. When some of us have been sent, um, it's not a very good example, but many of you who watch the Mara Heights some time back, there was a driver there who used to speak confidently. <laughs> <laughs> he was speaking for somebody, and uh, people don't know. And he would actually go and even talk to the DVC. If you actually school in Masai Mara, you forgive me. But that was in the public arena. I think the case almost. There are confidence that many of us execute, but I want to talk about the confidence in God. The synonyms of confidence is to trust, is to believe, is to have faith, credence, conviction reliance and dependence. This particular morning, as I've mentioned, as we look at in his presence, which is our main theme, I want us to look at Psalm chapter 57. So turn with me in the book of Psalm chapter 57. We read the Psalm of David. David is running away from Saul, and he gets a place and he hits himself in a cave, and he writes a Psalm that I see as a solid um, some that can actually give us a glimpse of what it takes to have the confidence in God. In Psalm chapter 57, I want to read from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy. I look to you for protection. I hide beneath the shadow of your wings until the danger passes by. I cry out to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purposes for me. He will send help from heaven to rescue me, disgracing those who haunt me. My God will send forth his unfailing love and faithfulness. Verse 4. I am surrounded by fierce lions who greatly devour human prey, whose teeth pierce like spears and arrows and whose tongue cut like swords. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all, uh, all the earth. My enemies have set a trap for me. I am weary from distress. They have dug a deep pit in my path, but they themselves have fallen into it. My heart is confident in you, O God. My heart is confident. That is the verse I'm preaching to you. No wonder I can sing your praises. Wake up my heart. Wake up, O oh liar and harp. I will wake up the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nation, for your unfailing love is high as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O oh God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. Amen. Amen. David speaks with a lot of confidence, I can tell you, until he wakes up the morning. Have you ever woken up the morning? Some of you don't wake up. David wakes up the morning. That is what he does in verse 8. He says that I am confident of you, Lord. I will not wait for morning. I will step out and do something for you. I will not wait for the appointment letter and the salary. I will begin the job. Praise the Lord. 
He's hiding and he speaks so confidently. And I want many of us who have been wondering, if you have applied for a job and you have not gotten any result, just go to that company and say, I had a sum of confidence. I want to begin the job. It doesn't matter the things. So praise the Lord. This is what David does here. He says, I will wake up the dawn. For many of you who don't understand the exposition of this, I'm a musha subui. Hallelujah. He's not waiting for the sun to begin the work. This man is confident. And where is David confident? He is in a cave. Why is he in a cave? He was not going to pray on a prayer mountain. Somebody is chasing him. Oh, economy is chasing you. So he's hiding. But he wants to wake up. You wake up and the lions are waiting for you. He writes and says, outside there are my enemies who are waiting for me. But he says, I will step up and I will begin. I feel like I preach if there are enemies in this place. I feel like I need to anoint them. And this is what David does. And I want us to look at this psalm as we look at what God anticipates as to be and do. As I mentioned, David writes Psalm chapter 57 in a very rough place. He's in a cave. He's hiding from King Saul who wants him dead. Many, maybe none of us um, can be in a, such a place because you say, many of us would want to give God after they worship him in gear. You know, that's how we encourage ourselves. David is not waiting for that song that suits his mouth. He is in that rough place, and yet he enjoys the confidence of God. And so I see a psalm of confidence in this place. David prays with confidence that God will rescue him. That is verse 1 to 4. And even he says, I will wake up in the morning and I will be able to praise my God. And he does and he steps forward to do praises from verse 6 to verse 10. In this psalm, David is hiding in a very dark cave, being hunted by his enemy. He desires to be delivered. I can tell you that when people step forward, when they have confidence, it's not because they are proud. Sometimes we can see people who are confident and we think they are proud. He is just depicting a trust. That is another way you would talk about this psalm. That I trust God so much that it doesn't matter where I will go. We were preaching somewhere with Deborah and Judy some time back. And she got, God was able to lift her spirit. And instead of encouraging and he said, family, listen, the worst thing that will happen to us is not death. My friend, we were mourning one of our youngest girls that had passed on. And she says, this is not the worst thing that can happen to you. And it sank in my mind. True. Actually, the worst that can happen to you is not the physical death, but your spiritual death. David knows that I have my God in my heart, and therefore I will trust and walk with him amidst of all the physical and other things that are surrounding me in terms of his pain. And so he prays that his deliverance will lead to the manifestation for the glory of God. Amen? The glory of God, in other words, is his presence. For many of us who have not been with us, when we are talking about the presence of God, we are talking about the ever-present help of God every time, and that is the glory of God. We learn a lot from this psalm about trusting God. The most significant being is that we go through difficulties. Many of us, as we sit here, and we go through many seasons of suffering. And we want to pray that God will help us, that the glory and the praise of God, that we will have confidence in his presence. Amen. We will wake up and not cry. Buenas if you son. Praise the Lord. The most people who are crying are Christians. One of my in-laws was posting something on status yesterday. But this is what I want to encourage you. Please be happy even if life is difficult. Just because you want to be sympathized. There is hope for Israel. Hallelujah. Even if there is no money. In fact, another prophet writes and says, I will praise the Lord even if there are no fruits on the fig tree. This is the confidence we are talking about. Hallelujah. I will be able to stand up and walk even though my enemies are. Because there is God. Christians, we need to wake up and give people hope. There is no hope. I have looked. People are now borrowing to eat. 
Unaandika tu hapo development loan. Wives, please know when you are applying this no development loan. We are developing. Life has become hard developing this man. <laughs> but there is hope for us. We will smile. Hallelujah. Oh, there is hope for us. We will praise the Lord. We will wake up and we will say, there is God of Israel. Many of us have been accused of other people. And you are feeling like there is nothing. You are demotivated. I want to encourage you because I'm a senior pastor here. I know what it takes if some of your staff are demotivated. They don't feel like morning will come. Wake up the morning and say, I will go to work. Hallelujah. They served me with a memo, but I will work again. Hallelujah. This is what David says. Don't be discouraged, music team. After I give you all my commendation and sometimes it's not pleasing, wake up and say, Pastor, we are again here. We will dance and let's dance more. This side four times, not three times. And then the other side. That is, that is what David does because he knows that it will bring glory and praise to God. He has confidence in his presence. After all, this is God's primary desire and goal in all things. And who should desire what God desires? For God to actually allow David to go through this. He knew. In the first place, why did actually God anoint David? And yet David had other great other sons. You know what happened? He was looking for the sheep elsewhere. So he put this man in another place. And then he says, I have rejected Saul. So he rejected Saul and he keeps Saul around David. And by the way, for many of you who are not theologians, it took so many other years Ni kama mimi nimetolewa hapa na kumu jamaa mepewa kitu. So mimi nakaa hapa lakini manto imeenda. Why would God so sovereign actually allow the young David, even though so conqueror, be able to be in such a situation? It was his desire that he may receive his glory. Amen. I want you to understand that. And David was only to be confident of that. In case of anything anyway, God had fought for David. At one point when he was facing Goliath and he had all the weapons, he says, you come to me with javelin and sword, but I come to you in the name of Jesus. How comes he doesn't do that? In fact, leave alone that when he was coming with the name of Jesus. For Goliath, he was able to face him with a small stone and he kills Goliath. It was very easy for David to do away with Saul. But a great man, solid in the word of God, decided to run away and hide in a gap. While hiding and a lot of fears, he rises up and pens a psalm of confidence. I want to look at a parallel psalm, a parallel verse in John chapter 3, 13, verse 3 to 4. It's a parallel verse again. Jesus demonstrated this kind of confidence that we need to imitate in John chapter 13, verse 3 to 4. The Bible says, and Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, he rose from the supper and let us, laid aside his garments, took a towel and guarded himself. For many of you who read this psalm every day, you will know that Jesus was preparing for his imminent departure. In that case, he makes a last supper an equivalent of a ceremony or a celebration for disciples. Why does he does do this? He is confident that I am going away. It will be very painful, but I will do that because I know where I'm coming from. He excludes a high level of confidence. He shows it out of love, out of trust. And when he does all that, and even mentioned to the disciples that some of them get at a place that they are sad, but for him, it's a joy. He exudes confidence in God. We'll be looking at these two Psalms as we proceed, both Psalms 57 and John chapter um, 13, as I draw some lesson. But let's proceed and look at David's confidence in Psalm chapter 57. David laments, expressing supreme confidence in the Lord, because Saul is constantly pursuing him. He's hiding in a cave. So if you look at that kind of mixture, or looks like a paradox of life, then you will see that David is confident about God. He acknowledges, and this is something that many of us don't do, his confidence in the Lord. Acknowledge, pronounce. It's only as men who die, even now kichapa tu mwana ume kofi hapa, atakufa tu kama mefunga mdo. But David 
acknowledges. We need to get a place that we are able to acknowledge the praise of God. Bwana asifiwe sana. Tumefinyika. Wanaume. Bwana asifiwe sana. I'm telling you things are bad, but we can't even talk to our women and tell them things are bad. Unaenaka tunyumbana nasema nitafanya. Nitatenda. He acknowledges. One of the things when I read the Bible, I wonder why Jesus was a God man, actually, would get at a place that he also fears. You know, he feared when he went to the cross and said, Lord, may this cup be taken away from me. He acknowledges his humanity, but he puts his confidence in God. Why would David, a man after God's own heart again, get at a place, he's running away. Just imagine our president trying to run away from this country. He'll be disqualified for their job. Praise the Lord. How would you cry? Even some of us, because you are to leave. We'll be disqualified as husband. It is also expected that even me, up up a senior pastor, kuna kuliali at a kama kuna pes. Yes, because that is what we do. Or I go to a pendo, I went to another, and almost everyone was crying. As a pastor, I should be able to stand firm and have confidence that even though I'm crying, I want to give hope here. So why was David? David actually went against the drift. He was crying before God. This psalm is also a crying psalm. It's not a psalm that he was speaking like he, it's a crying psalm. Why would a king that he was to sit in Amanza Kulialia? Nakumbuka Raiza alipokuwa na zema kuna peso, wale wambia anza kufanya kazi. Hapana Lialia bana, we have given you all tools of power. So David cries, cries here. And he says, Lord, oh, he said, but I wake up the morning. He said, nitaanza kazi mapema. Subui na mapema, takuwa tumechukua ikitu. Hallelujah. He acknowledges, he pronounces it. And I thank God for that. You are unsafe as long as your confidence is not in the Lord's way. For many of us who are thinking things will be way good. You may have lived, I know some of us, when even you see some of us preach here and you say, this is a young man, he doesn't know. I have looked for a job without getting. One of our longest serving friends of ours, we served with them in 2013. The spouse has never found job. Unfortunately, the spouse is a man. So you are saying, Pastor, I think, uh, tell me any other offering that I can do. There is no other offering. Just wait on the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is confidence that we can get from the Lord. You are safe as long as you are in the Lord. That is what David says. There are two things that I want us to be able to reflect in Psalm chapter um, 57, and then three things that I want us to reflect from John chapter 3, and 13, then we'll be able to be done. He pleads for protection. That is one thing. And then the other thing is he puts forward his confidence in praise. Let's begin with the, he pleads for protection. In the presence of God, it is not safe. It is actually dangerous. One man preaching to us in a seminar, when all of us who are gathered as Christians, who are willing maybe to make an impact in the business, he said that in the world it's called risk. For us Christians, it's called faith. Faith is a risky thing. Buana swesan. Ladies, imagine by faith, unakuja hapa na kupadia stranger wende kwake, unaaja baba yako na I'm telling you, it's very risky. Na unaenda, na mimi na kuambia hapa vow for death to us part. Faith is a very risky thing. And therefore to go in the presence of God, we cannot claim safety. We will plead for protection. Hallelujah. For many of us who are thinking that we Christians need to impact space, it will never be safe. Tell your neighbor, it will never be safe. Yes, I got some few other things when my Bishop Emeritus was taking up this role as ES. My friend, there are no safe jobs. There are no safe jobs. We only need for you to take the mantle of faith and plead for protection in Jesus' name. Some of you work in places that your faith is threatened every day. It's tested. In fact, for some of your companies, you are always having what you call the end year party, which has all amalgamation of everything, including beer. When you were in Mombasa, we were told there is a mean bar. You remember the mean bar? The mean bar has some, has some content that are not Christian. I told pastors, we will not remove. I want to say, who is going to empty the mean bar that has some beers? It's very risky. We are living in a society. 
Even our children, all of them are actually socializing with people that are not born again. And let's not be cheated. Let's tell them the truth. Plead for protection to be in the presence of God. Yes, I'm in the cave. And he says, the lions are, are surrounding me. And Saul is chasing me. And he said, there are thousands of enemies. So as Christians, we are not living in a safe. Now, LGBTQ may never go away for many of us. But we may know how we need to live in a polluted environment. We plead for protection. So deal with your worries in God's presence by one, hiding in God's wing. David says, I hide in your wings. Praise the Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I look to you for protection. I will hide beneath the shadow of your wings. My friend, you are not in the wings of your employer. You are not the wings of your boss. You are not the wings of your spouse. You are not the wings of your children. You are in the wings of God. He says that. So David says, I will seek refuge. We can seek our confidence in the Lord by being able to hide into his wings. I know some of us, because of the difficult circumstances, there's no prayer you pray for yourself for protection. There's another good prayer that I want you to be praying. The prayer in Psalm chapter 46. It's a prayer of preservation. I will not preach Psalm chapter 46. But you may want to go and read the Psalms. He says that God is the present help in terms of trouble. Say a prayer. It happens. God will change things. Acknowledge the most high God of our human weakness. This is what David is doing. He is human. In another way, this someone would say, we are human. I was preaching actually the same sermon to our staff on Wednesday, if they remember. And one of the topics I preached from this chapter, because this was my chapter the whole month, the whole week, he said, we are human. We are always bombarded to have weakness every day. You wake up every day and you see you are unable to face life challenges. None of us is stronger on his own. And this is what we do. We need to acknowledge that. That's why many of us who sit on the board, we ask you, what is your opinion? What is your opinion? What do you think? What do you have? We are better together in Jesus' name. And we acknowledge that. We acknowledge that to our God who is transcendent, who is all-powerful, who is all-knowing, who is always with us. He makes us to be fruitful as long as we ask him. And that is John chapter 15. One of the things is you plead for protection. It should not be imagined. I have told you the reality is we are living in the world that is polluted. As you live here, you're going to meet other motorists on the road. They are not from church, although it's on a Sunday. You must be aware of your enemies, of your lions. Are you aware of your lions? Nothing threatens our safety than our enemies. That is why we put and close our door. In my house, sometimes I go and sleep and come back and confirm again that the doors are closed. But I'm a pastor. What about you? We were on a lala to you. Cross check. Check your vehicles, my brother. And plead for protection. Hallelujah. Watch a kulala namnaivi. Some of us are not doing what we call servicing of our lives every day. So David cross checks. Imagine he's in a cave and he says, There are lions there. By the way, lions are always in a cave. I want to remind you if you are not aware, there are lions out there. Please, you need to be able to do that. That was be good. There is somebody, in fact, they say he's constantly, hey, my goodness. Have you ever driven from a place, particularly at night, and you see a vehicle? This is what it's all is doing to David. Beware of lions. They are chasing me. They are chasing you. They are chasing your children. They are chasing your spouse. Beware of them. And then plead for protection. What I want to do now, Thank you for the mission. You said we pray with, with understanding. Lord, we thank you. What are you thanking God for? Some of us have prayed blind prayers. Don't be, my friends, stop praying safe prayers. We need to make dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers are specific. Greg Croce writes a book that I actually read. Many of you anticipate to read you. Dangerous prayers. But it's not a prayer to kill anyone. One of the prayers that Greg Croce says, he says, search me. And I say, man, it's such. Because after when it happened, I didn't even search it. Like I'm telling you, it's very dangerous to search yourself. Because you know yourself better. Hallelujah. 
Another prayer that actually Craig Crochet prays in the dangerous prayer, he says, break me. There are many of us, actually, that cannot be moved by anything. Unaona hapo ile preacher nyo likuwa na sema ule Levite. Kuna watu, hata wasipokuwa na haraka. Juzi nilikuwa ama nikitoka maa. Likuwa na simamisha magari. By the way, mutumaya lisimama kuni jamstadia ni mulevi. Oh my goodness. Christians cannot be broken. Nikasimamisha, nikasimamisha. Heka ona gari ingine mzuri. Mujamu mungine kuja na gari ingine mze hivi. Siku nilipata tie up. The guy who helped me was a drunkard. I thank God. Christians, oh, God need to break you. There are things that are not moving Christians. We will see people dying, but a Christian will not be moved. You will see your neighbor, no clothes. A Christian will not be moved. I just ask you to be aware what threatens you. Beware of the net. He says, they have put a pit for me. Beware. They are always there. Okay? When I lived with my aunt, she was a teacher. Every time we used to get a house card, we would drop 20 bob in the house to test her integrity. <laughs> for many of you who got jobs, now we have 1,000. We used to get a house card. We would drop it there. And we would know. One has first aunt. We are leaders. We have mastered how to do litmus test without that paper. And we will be able to get the integrity of some of you. And I thank God for somebody here. Unaweza pereko kwa ofisi kubwa. Na uletewe siku moja bahasha kubwa. Ambiye mungu hallelujah. This office looks like this. That will be the end of you. Beware of the pit. You will pray for protection. Bwana asifuetan. And you will be in the presence of God. Otherwise, the same day job and your pastor in your bed, Jews, in the end of be in the presence of God. The enemy is always around. I'm not saying I'm an enemy. I'm giving you what people do. And when you know what I'm saying, I'm saying there are simple things, simple audit things. Yeah? When I say, I'm going to go to the hotel, I'm going to go to the you are corrupt. I'm going to go to the hotel, I'm going to go to you are corrupt. These are snares. Tunaenda tunawe hoteli na mimi nasema, ask what you want. And I see your corruption. <laughs> Start pleading for your protection, for your job. Exalt the Lord and give him all the glory. One of the things David does, he goes a place of surrender and just says, Lord, in your arm I am. I sometimes like slaughtering chicken and some sheep, a cow I cannot do alone. But I love it when actually the chicken accepts the knife. <laughs> Never attempt to eat particularly a goat that was strangled. It kwangi tam. Sinukweli wale wana chinjanga is a bit. Be a good sacrifice on the altar when God has to use you. On Baba protection, be surrender. You know the way you do it before the police? But the police want to fry your son, even me. When you tell me sorry, sorry finishes me. Actually, it finishes me. And I want to think that's how God acts. Don't pray for protection when I fight. Sorry, sorry. My friend, you will not receive anything there. You are either fighting with Saul or fighting with God. He says, I exhort you. He's surrendering to the masses of God. He puts his forward the praise. In verse 7 to verse 11, we see David stepping forward, and he speaks, and he says, now I want to wake up the dawn. He says, let the morning come. I know God has asked something that I do. And Jesus speaks in John chapter 13, and he said, and he moved from where he was seated, and he stepped forward, and he served the disciples. He knew the confidence and the solid ground they were in. There are many of us who are behaving like Israel. Even though something happened to your life, my friend, overcome, turn east, make progress. Praise the Lord. Even if it was, there is nothing, in fact, one question Bishop was asked when we were pastors that what is the deadly sin? What was the irreconcilable sin? And many of you have an answer. There is no irreconcilable sin even in marriage. Let me tell you as your pastor this morning. There is nothing. 
So hii kitu ya kukaa hapo mpaka some of you are in depression state just step forward and do a simple word one single word I'm sorry it's done to God to your enemy it is done it is good and things will be okay Katika kufikiria oh sasa naogopa hivi you know I was telling another friend of mine now Denjaro is if you have a good name like pastor and you want to run away from the problem naanza ku apply visa ya kwenda US so wakati nafanya parenting unasema umetoroka kumbe umetoroka shida they have said that that's not the way to go just say sorry and stay home are we together he praises for who he is he says my heart is steadfast how is your heart how is your heart for you to praise the lord your heart should be stable he should be able to do that i have mentioned this is one of the favorite verse verse 8 awake the den amusha <laughs> subui don't oversleep when problems hit you is the moment you need to wake up and say god on my knees every day watch me and walk with me because many of us when we are in the presence of god and things are not going right you would oversleep you will cry more. Our confidence in, so, in the God is so contagious and thrilling. It cannot wait for the morning or the favorable season to praise God. It awakes the morning. God's blessing makes us to go extra mile in worship and in service. Don't wait for um, the, that favorable moment. He says in verse 9, if you read with me very well, I want to remind you, he says in verse 9, God will sweep them away, both the young and the old, faster than a pot hits over burning thorns. Then he says, he's going to rejoice until he's able to see the ends of the earth. What was it? Verse 9, he says, I will thank, I will thank you, Lord, among all people. I will sing your praises among the nations. The word nations there refers to Gentiles. That actually, when we will be confident about God and have confidence, people will say, this man is here. Seek him. Buenas fuesa. Praise the Lord. The, the, the Gentiles, the Gentiles were unbelievers. That is how he talks about it. doesn't talk about nations as the special growth. It speaks about that when you make the sound, people will say, there is a Christian in this place. There used to be a man who lived in a house of a landlord. And he used to pray every day. And the landlord was not born again. At one point when this man was moving away, the landlord said, I wish you just stay. They said, I'm on transfer. That is what praise can do. It makes itself. It announces itself. How comes the presence of God can only be felt in this surrounding of our four-acre land? It must go beyond. It must be a noise that goes beyond. Don't just be good. You are not known anywhere beyond. Let your family see the praise that you are in the presence of God. Let your children see the praise of your. Let your workmates see. Let every neighbor know that there is somebody. In fact, if you come to my place now, they know there is pastor. You do get lost when you are around, so you just say, Kwa pastor. You get that. One as first time. Let it be known like that. Praise the Lord. Kuna watu wengine hapa, you do business. And we don't know which business. What is that, my brother? Business. Business gani, elder Malet. Mpaka the day you die, na alikuwa nafanya biashara gani. We want nations to know us we are believers. The psalmist says that I will praise until the Gentiles will know. The confidence we must imitate based on John chapter 13, verse 3 to 4. Very three principles. We must know our resources. And this even David knew. He knew God's power. We must know our background. He was sent of God. Even me, I was sent of God. I believe so. Even if I, I would doubt, I know it is God. Because I serve God. I didn't come to serve man here. So when my time is done, I will also just wake up from the towel and do what Jesus did. Know that. One of my best mentors told me that immediately you go to your job, prepare your exit. Kuna watu wengine hapa mmefanya kazi na mmekaa na hii kitu mnaharibu vijana wetu. Mnawaambia kazi ni permanent na pension. Hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Kwanza vijana wa Saidi don't want to do that job. Bishop told you the other day. 
So we think that everything is permanent and punishable. God has sent us. And when God send you, one of the things, and another friend of mine tells me that, you know, every time, see them, we have transitioned in Kwanambia, where the cloud has moved. And there was they have spoken. He said, keep hearing, keep following the cloud. Hallelujah. This is what David does. We must know our vision. He knew that he had been sent from the Father, if you read with me. And then he was able to arise from the table. But if you are sent by God, know what you've been asked to do. Let your mission dictate what you do. Many of us, you see, they have said that if you don't know where you are going, every road and any road will take you there. But you know why you are here. I wouldn't imagine that you are coming to church today and then you end up in a supermarket. That will be, you'll be lost. You have to take your family somewhere. Number one, knowing our resources, God's power. It is God's power that can give you confidence. God's power, not any other. We are fragile without God. Seek his help. Trust his presence. David does that. Jesus does that. David had been anointed for God's purpose. He knew that. And so he would be able to stand in the cave and do whatever he wanted to do. Some of us, God has given us leadership in this place. Do that. Hmm? I'm seeing my honorable Koche there. God has appointed, and we are proud of you, man. Ukika hapo, unasema hapo, si jina mzuri. Najwa kuna vile naendanga hapo, nilikuwa na kajina, unajwa nilikuwa na kajina siku ingina. You know, when you get there, you acknowledge the sovereignty of God. Because I would go there and they say, I was a great preacher. Saul was once. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God left him. But when God has anointed you, acknowledge which purpose you are serving. Jesus, knowing he was from the Father, and he would go to the Father. So, some of us, kienda nyumbani unarudi nyumbani, nikizika watu na kambianga and do dust to dust. Yano wenye penye ulitoka tu mekurudish. Although we are what I'm telling you is, you are from somewhere, and you are going somewhere. God wants you to know that you are from him. And by that, you will be able to acknowledge his resources. God's power was at play. And thus, even though in a cave, David, or in a trial conference like Jesus, because he was just going to fed the Sanhedrin, they exuded confidence in God. The present helper in times of trouble, he assured us confidence. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. And we shall exalt his name for his glory. He knew his background. What is your background? Some of you need to do background check. You do well as executives to check where your employees have come from, which organization, which past records, human resource managers, what naangalia. While God forgives mistake, for many of us who are bosses, kuna kitabu wat naandika makosa ya watu. Wacha niangalia isaid. Huku kuna watu na supervise. Kuna kitabu huko nyuma wat naandika. Na unajua wat naandika siku moja, you can use it. You may never use it. Hallelujah. Where is your background? Some of us need to check even where we have come from. Kuna watu ingine hapa tulizaliwa kwa maboma ya uchawi. Na I don't like preaching that too much. Lakini una rega rega tu. You cannot ask for protection. Najua kwa spirit kanaweza kuja. Nilisikia kana kuja kana nasema tunataka representative. Check your background, my brother. One of my kijana have been mentoring. Baba yaka alikuwa mkora akiwa kijana. Haka iba gari is a manual. Haka is start without the key. So the other day, the son did the same to his car. Haka sema hii kitu inafuata watu. Haka kuja gari hiko kwa parking. Na alikuwa maenda na ufungu. Haka sema na mimi ni ma... Haka sema pasa leta yu kijana. Tuombe. Sababu hii kitu ni maifanya. Nda ya metoka na gari yangu. Where you have come from. Check very well. Some of us have come from polygamous families. So ukitembea bibi ya nakuombea kila. Tukua spirit na kufuatanga. Juhuko nyumbani yu kitu ni nomo. Please know your background. If it is not, then make your background. The background is that knowing that I am from the Father. Because utakuna kumbusha what? You've seen even some families that are actually drunkards. Hawa na kunyua pombe kama chai. And it's no more for them. In fact, they get a certain umru na kuta tumutota liingia kwa yokitu. Check your background. Jesus was from God. I have lost where I was. Where is my background? Okay, Jesus was a shepherd boy. No, no, David was a Goliath slayer. 
He was an overcomer. So he was not going to be shaken. Some of us have good history. Keep that history. Yesterday we were doing something on the leadership. And we say that once you lose the leadership credibility, it's difficult to overcome it. By the way, you can overcome so many mistakes, even as a leader, decisions can be done. Unaona mutu wa kiangu kanga, ata kitoa ushuda. In fact, it takes at least six months to start redeeming your credibility. So once you have been able to make good names, men of us, please maintain it, don't lose it. And David was not going to lose it, even though he was being sought by Saul. At one point, by the way, David gets at a place and he finds that Saul is asleep. Na hiyo panga imeenda. Unajua angearibu tu jina na kumaliza huyo enemies. Angearibu vitu mbili, jina yake na Saul. You know that? Huh? Ange slaughter. And that would have... But David keeps his name. And he said, God, I want to be with you. Psalm chapter 1, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and with javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. He knew where he had come. He had gone through God, and he was not going to use any other means. To be in the presence of God, we see Jesus was born from a humble background. He was a child of God. He was, he, he was able to do what is right. What I want to say here is manage your worries of being confident in God's power. God has helped you to fight many things. For many of us, God has healed us. God has provided for you. God has walked with you. A single thing or a trial should not make you to betray your trust in God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, Simon Peter, when he was asked whether he knew, he said, this is a child of God. And so Jesus was a son of God. And by that, he knew what he was to do. Do you know your background? Go and check and do background check. Lastly, know our mission. What is our mission? Many of us are here in Eldoret for a short while, for a short business. By the way, even us, we are on this earth for a short time. Acts chapter 13, verse 36, the Bible says, and after God, after David had served God's purpose in his generation, he died and his body decayed. I want to tell you what happened. For Jesus, when he decayed, you know, he served, Jesus served both the earth and he was to go back and live continually. So that's someone I can preach on another day. But this is the thing. Even us on this earth, we are actually on a mission. So, you have to ask yourself, what does God want me to do? It will make you to pray dangerous prayer and say, God help me that I serve people. Because some of you just, Munakatu, men are saying, when my life, I've done all I want to do, I need just to go away. Even in this place, I've written what I want to do. After that, I'm going to go back and go back. I'm going to go forever. Because we realize even our constituents don't want somebody who will lead forever. Define and know your purpose. For Jesus was to redeem the world. For David was to be able to do all he was to do. In fact, at one point, you know, David said, I will gather the material that will build the sanctuary of God. While Solomon built the temple of God, the materials which build the temple were actually done by David. And David did it all heartedly. At one point, David said, I will not give to the Lord that which cost me nothing. And when that temple was built and finished, and people came. They saw a magnificent thing. When it was brought down during the time that we had the war, you realize there was this who were crying. They had never seen such an attempt. David knew his purpose. And he did it excellently. Let's know. Our mission will always drive us. Our mission will always drive us. An A student will always wake up in the morning because he knows I must keep my A. He has a confidence. And the mission drives that. Lakini ukakuwa kama mimi, napenda tu kuku. Nikukaa na kuoga. Uta hai wana na kimbia kimbia. Umaona watu wana kulanga sasubuhi, sasaba, sasane. Awana haraka. Walimu, unawana watu wenye wana kaa inje. Beli meringu, paka headmas, anasema kenda class. These people have no mission in classroom. I'm sorry for teachers. Sorry, my, thank you. Sorry. But I'm saying it for some few teachers, not you. There are teachers who do not know the mission. They do not know objectives. For many of us who are in the banking, we give, like our staff, we give them three objectives for the whole year. But do you check them? And do we check them? Last year, we were actually evaluating our staff on the three, five core values. Na kuambia yi core value, how did you achieve them last year? Ilikuwa nguma, hata I was being evaluated as well. Just five core values, integrity, community, and all that. That was the scorecard for last year. Define your mission. In your family, define your vision. Don't be just walking anyhow like the Nairobians who walk and sit on a stone. You know where a man is going. 
by looking at what he does. A committed man, you see, you see a diligent man, what he does. The greater the mission, the greater the confidence. And may I add, the greater the sacrifice. Praise the Lord. And that will give you the confidence. By the way, the higher you go, the higher is expected of you to do things. What is your mission? Knowing our mission, somebody has said, this is uh, St. Augustine, pray as though everything depended on God, but work as though everything depended on you. Now, there is a reverse of this, that many of us in the presence of God, we have actually worked less. Faith is by grace alone, I don't deny. But some of us have not done any effort to search this God. So he challenges us this. That prayer as though everything. But when you start working, work as everything depends on you. Mission drives hard work. And our steward should role in his presence. We find our confidence in God through God's vision. I want to finish and say that God's praise and confidence flows from his mercy. It flows from his love, agape love, it flows from the truth, the word of God. It flows from his glory. It flows from that. That is where we hide. Another way if I was to preach this psalm, it will say that David was hiding through prayer in a cave. When you are running away from the enemy, where is your hiding place? Do you stand and start gossiping? You know there are many of us who make political friends. Thank you for many of us. In politics, they repeat a lie until it becomes a truth. And then you also increase the volume of your voice. David doesn't do that. He hides. He finds a hiding place. And that is in the wings of God. Through his glory. Through the word of God, the truth. The love of God, unconditional love, his mercy. The confidence of God is so solid. It's so immense. It's so unfathomable. You can stand there and say no. And there is one thing which many of us have been told for many of us who have been longer in Sita. In this, you can also take it as members. So long as with God, you cannot fear anyone. They say every man who kneels before God, every man that has confidence in God, can stand before anyone. Praise the Lord. When you are able to know who God is, you will wake up every morning and say, Sir, I want to say the job is good, the salary is good, but thank you very much. Allow me to go and pray. I will get back to you how I will do this business. It is so solid and so confident of that. It begins by us knowing him, knowing the resources extended to us, the mission ahead. There is no amount of cave experience that can deter you to enjoy his presence. David breaks it and he says, I will wake up the morning and seek the Lord. Don't overdwell in that particular situation of bitterness. Wake up, forgive, and do that. It is the confidence assured in him. And I pray that we may seek him. I want us to pray as our deputy senior pastor comes to make a prayer for us. Just close your eyes and think of what things are worrying you. They could be your work. You know, sometimes some of us could be chased by people. Others, we are being chased by our own behaviors. We are insecure in all things that we are attempting to do. And I want you to pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your organization. Think very hard in this. This is just not a someone that will be able to have head knowledge. This is a someone that should move you and be able to break the money. So you not wait that next year, if they continue like this, I will resign. We want to refuse that spirit. God wants you to break the money, to break the cave experience, to break the bitterness, to break everything that has deterred you even to utter word. Some of us are suffering, and you have no friend, by the way, to tell. David was in that place. He decided to tell it to Jesus. He decided to tell it to God. And maybe you're there, and you feel we want to pray with you in that area. I don't know which area. Just come as worship team comes here in Jesus. 